It's hump day, there ladies and gents, and oh, we're dude. ready to boogie, healthy, and hip hop. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. gonna be a good one today. Here we go. Shut, Shut up, up and sit down. Sit down. Business the Business Bros Podcast was created for you. Learn from the business professionals who come to share their stories. Find out what's working in business and social media, what's hot and what's not, straight from the mouths of successful entrepreneurs out there doing the real work. And now, welcome to another episode of Business Bros. Yeah, <laughs> it is that time, James. Yeah, drop it is. the heat. Here we go. All right, all you business pros out there. Before we jump into the show, just a quick reminder to please subscribe on whichever platform it is that you're listening to us on today. Give us a like, give us a follow, subscribe, and drop a review. Help other like-minded business owners find value from our awesome guests while we rise up in those podcast rankings. We'll sincerely appreciate every single one of you for it. And if you want to be a guest on the show, we'd love to have you on to learn from you as well. Go to www.businessbros.biz to schedule your time slot. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media at Business Bros Pod. All right, everybody, we're so excited and so honored to bring yet another incredible guest to the Business Bros Pod. Move over, Elmo. The Sesame Street of the 21st century is in the house. Yeah. Our guest today is more than inspired by music. It's essential to his being. It is through his love of music and of his son that he was inspired to launch an educational technology platform with the mission of creating a fun and exciting learning environment founded on hip hop culture. Our guest strives to maintain the vibe and energy of hip hop and the content is focused on teamwork, self-esteem and positivity that both resonates and is so vitally important to today's youth. Having presented to the crew on Shark Tank and getting sideswiped by one of the biggest companies in the world, <coughs> Disney. <coughs> Our guest has an incredible story to tell in learning how to bounce back from a major setback and keep the ship moving toward the ultimate goal. Tune in today to learn how our guest wants to positively impact young lives and how he is changing children's educational world. Joining us today from Healthy Hip Hop, welcome to the show, Roy Scott! Woo! Ooh, button got stuck there for a second. But it, <laughs> it went, it went. How's it, it going, went. boy? Oh, it is amazing. I need, I need everything you just did. That energy, I might just use that as my own like personal commercial for every intro. That was dope, man. I appreciate you. It's all so, yours. It's all yours. I heard that previous guests take James's fire intro, plug it into their alarm clock, and that's the first thing they hear in the morning when they wake up. <laughs> Ooh, that is not a bad. That's not a bad idea. That that gets you pumped up, man. I absolutely love it, man. <laughs> Get you going. All right, Roy. Let's start this thing off. We are in a business podcast, so. Tell me, what is it that you're selling? What is Healthy Hip Hop? So Healthy Hip Hop is an online platform. Uh, you can think Spotify meets TikTok in a curated environment families. And so uh, right now we're in a public beta. So it's actually uh, live on iOS and Android. You can download the app. Uh, feel free to follow us on our platform, on our social media as well. But download the app. You can stream our music from the app. And you can also create these TikTok style videos. And so we'll, we'll be launching that subscription uh, come this spring. And so that's what we'll actually be selling directly to parents and to teachers. All right. I know my kids are a little older now, but I know those kindergarten times, man, those, that, those days are nothing but stand up, move, get your energy. Nothing teaches you uh, like music does. It gets you in the zone. It gets you in a flow state. It gets your energy pumping. It gets you in a high level. Uh, what do you, what guy, why, why hip hop? Why doing this for kids? What, what, what was that? Uh, I mean, I, I, James kind of mentioned in the intro, but what was that motivational factor that got you there? Yeah, absolutely. So I was that kid who like grew up in the urban core, really influenced by hip hop culture. I didn't have a lot of guidance around me. So after I graduated high school, I uh, decided to skip my college education, had an opportunity to play Division One basketball on a scholarship, threw all that in the trash can and said, you know what, I'm going to be a rapper. And so, you know, not, not the best decision, but uh, on that journey, I had my wake up call. I was picking up my son, Justice, from school. Uh, he was about four years old at the time. And on the way home, I noticed him repeating my music word for word. And so, you know, th those lyrics promoted drugs, violence, misogyny. And that was my light bulb moment that I couldn't be this kind of influence on my son or anybody else for that matter. And that's what inspired me to create a positive alternative, which is healthy hip hop. 
Mm, dude, I mean, it's it's funny how when you have kids, like so many things change. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm a huge Eminem fan, and uh, it took a long. Now, I mean, my kids are probably not the, the as old as they should be. They're they're uh, ten and eleven or ten and twelve, uh, and so you know they listen to Sam Eminem with me. Probably not my proudest dad moment or anything, but dude, I mean, there's so much. You're absolutely right. Like, there's so many uh, bad lyrics in there. There's so much stuff. Uh, on the other hand, I'm 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 a little lenient on the flip side. I'm like, dude, they're growing up in an era with the internet. Like, it was totally different for me. What they know today is completely different from what they know in the past. So, uh, all right, let's let's uh, let's dive into the big heartache, right? So, you develop this company, you start building it up, and then you get the opportunity of a lifetime. You get to go on Shark Tank. First of all, tell me what that experience was like getting to that point. Yeah, so really, it kind of just happened just out of nowhere, honestly. So when we what were up, building, the, yeah, we, we were building the business. Yeah, what's up with a deco, my man? So <laughs> we, we were, uh, you know, building the business organically, doing a lot of live events. Uh, we started creating some curriculum. So over the last five years, we had done over fifteen hundred live events, uh, reached hundreds of thousands of children. But ultimately, we wanted to be a, our goal is to be an iconic children's brand. So that's what we, that's why we say the Sesame Street of the twenty first century or an urban Disney. And so anyway, saying that to say, we started creating some of our additional um, like uh, assets, like a children's television show. Uh, we started creating curriculum, different ways that we can also monetize the business. And during that process, we got selected to pitch on Shark Tank. And it really came from an email. So I learned we had been traveling the country also performing. So I learned that they were going to do this pitch, uh, this kind of this casting call in Houston. And I told my business partner at the time, I said, listen, we're, uh, I'm going to send this email, but if we don't, if they don't respond to this, because they usually don't, we're going to go to Houston for this casting call. And so long story short, sent the email the following day, I get a phone call and it was from a, a, a 310 area code. I know that's on the West Coast. And so uh, I answered and it's like, yeah, this is, you know, such as from Shark Tank. Can you tell us about healthy hip hop? And so anyway, fast forward, ended up going through all the process. And it was really um, it was highly stressful, honestly, because it was almost I was kind of executive producing this pitch because typically the pitches are right around their sweet spot is like 90 seconds. Ours was like about 120 seconds because we had two puppets at the time. So hip and hop kind of like Bert and Ernie. Uh, we had uh, like a kid dancers from LA. We had to go through like all this SAG stuff, like stuff I had no idea about. So anyway, I was putting together this whole production for this pitch. And during that, we kind of had to walk through this, this really strict process of getting everything clear to go on Shark Tank. Right. So anyway, go on Shark Tank, um, we went in super confident thinking, man, we're going to close a deal, uh, no doubt. And, uh, basically ended up getting our, you know, our, having to tuck our tails because everybody was like, yeah, we love what you're doing, but you know, we were asking for too much money. Uh, we, we hindsight 2020, we were, we were asking for half a million for a 20% equity stake in the company, which was like a 1.5 million or 2.5 million valuation. And so, uh, anyway, kept shooting our shot and everybody kind of was backing out. Mark Cuban backed out. He was like, yeah, I love what you're doing, uh, but you're asking for too much money. So kind of one by one, they were backing out. And the last shark that was left was um, Kevin O'Leary, aka Mr. Wonderful. And so in my mind, the last episode I had watched of Shark Tank, I remember him saying, I'm going to squish you like a cockroach, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, let's just go ahead and get squished like cockroaches and get the hell out of here. And so um, here comes Mr. Wonderful saying, well, listen, you know, I've been in the education space. Uh, Oregon Trail, that's a game when I, we were like kids. I don't know if you guys Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. That was uh, that was his one of his properties, uh, Oregon Trail. He That was one of his, his games, like one of the first computer games like ever uh, in the education space. Uh, Carmen San Diego was his. Uh, we referenced the Wiggles in the pitch. The Wiggles are like the uh, they're a kid group that came out of Australia who did really big like on public access television in London and, and do, they did like world tours. So he knew the founders of the Wiggles. And so he's like, I've been in this space. You know, I'll give you the half a million for 50 percent of just your kids TV show. I don't want anything else. And that's contingent upon me walking this into a network and getting it picked up. So, again, we we went into a confident tails tucked. And I was like, damn, hold on, Mr. Wonderful. Like we never even me and my partner at the time never even discussed him being like a, a, a potential shark. It was like, you know, Mark Cuban or Damon John. But uh, uh, Damon John wasn't on our episode. So anyway, we get the deal. We're super excited. You know, his CEO is a younger gentleman named Alex Kenji came to our trailer. It's like, we love what you guys are doing. Let's get the ball rolling. So fast forward, started the diligence. And then it kind of just then went ghost on us. And so uh, that was it, like September of 2015 when we had filmed and they went ghost on us. And then 
well, you know, I was like, what's going on? What's the next step? So finally in March of 2016, six months later, is when I got the call from the Shark Tank producer saying, hey, Roy, you know, you guys did an incredible job. Uh, but unfortunately, your episode, you know, it's not going to air. And, and so, oh, yeah, you talk about you. Yeah. Dude, I almost had you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh. Man, I can laugh about it now, but, you know, I'm six foot three. I, I turned like three foot six. I turned it, I like shrunk. I was like, my heart just came out of my chest. I'm like, what do you mean it's not going to air? And he kind of gave me some BS. I was like, well, the slots got full. And so I'm like, oh my God, like this was our, this was our, our based on life changing moment. Cause we knew more importantly than the deal, it was the Shark Tank effect. They were getting, the seven, yeah, they, they were getting 7 million viewers. And so anyway, I emailed Alex Kenji. He's the CEO of Valeria Ventures, who we started our diligence with. And I was like, hey, Alex, can we get on the phone? I want to make sure, you know, whatever we got, we can still work it out. And so he said, let's talk tomorrow. And so uh, we got on the phone the next day and he said, Roy, listen, can I talk to you off the record? And of course, I don't even care now. I'm, I've been exposing him. I was like, yeah, well, you're, you're talking off the record. He's like, well, you guys got effed. And I was like, well, what do you mean? He's like, well, Shark Tank is uh, 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 is owned by, uh, airs on ABC. ABC is owned by Disney. And Disney looked at your children's programming as competition. So welcome to Hollywood. Oh. Uh, Yeah, that was me. That was me laying in that thing. Oh. I, was, I was laying in that casket dead. Like, <laughs> all right, all right. I want. I want to pause here, dude. Because first of all, hell of a story, right? I mean, yeah, you were going through it at the time. That that was brutal. But you had to have gained some stuff, right? I mean, think about all the stuff you were set up. You weren't set up to go on Shark Tank prior to. Then yeah. after that, you you mentioned a couple things where you set yourself up as far as characters, as far as pitch is concerned. I mean, at this point, you got to you got to stand up and pitch in front of the sharks, and even though and got a deal, and even though it didn't work out in your favor, you're now positioned to like really go out and find either venture capitalists or find partners or find whoever you're looking for. So you know, yeah, you got shit skills I've acquired over a very long career. But, but <laughs> love it. Now you're ready, right? So, so what happens after that deal basically goes to crap? What do you do with everything that you were able to set up? So after that, what happens was we realized that we had something special, but we just didn't really have a strong business model. And really, them breaking us was really going to be give us that exposure we need and kind of you know a create a windfall of opportunities. But we realized we didn't have a strong business model, and so. I'm originally from Kansas City. That's when I got in the entrepreneurial resources that Kansas City had to offer. And we made the pivot to a tech company. So before it was more like service based. We thought we had a kid's television show. We were doing live events. But big picture, that wasn't scalable. So we knew we had kind of did some research where we had found success at with teachers using healthy hip hop in the classroom to improve focus and engagement. Parents love playing the music. So we're like, we're going to pivot to the tech space, create an online platform for educators and a mobile application that extends into the home. And so that's when we really said, OK, we found our business model. I went through multiple like early stage entrepreneurial tech, you know, kind of ventures, pitch competitions that year. So that happened in 2016. Going into 2017, uh, we secured over one hundred thousand dollars in non-dilutive grants. Uh, so basically no equity in the company, just a straight grant to develop our tech. Uh, so developed our platform, tested it, uh, went into 2018 with our kind of our MVP, the first version of it was really raw, but started testing that MVP, getting some feedback, finally got some buy-in from some investors because I'm in the Midwest and, you know, Kansas City, uh, we're not the typical KC investment. You know, we we have a hip hop, you know, uh, background in, in tech, like we're not the typical, you know, for KC. So, uh, but they still bought into us. We got some investors uh, and that led to us getting accepted into Techstars, the Techstars Accelerator, uh, and also getting accepted to Google for startups. So it was like, you're right. That showed us, OK, we have something special. If Disney looks at us as a threat, now we have to identify our business model. Now we have to go get the validation and attraction. So I really just got in the trenches and been building ever since. And, it, you know, how it comes full circle. We actually just got accepted and aired on a show called Meet the Drapers. And Meet the Drapers is like a uh, the Silicon Valley version of Shark Tank. So it's like it came full circle, you know, got trashed by Shark Tank, got in the trenches, used that as fuel to my fire continue busting my ass, getting the product right, getting investments. Uh, now we're on Meet the Drapers, getting prepared to fully launch our product uh, this spring and even just launched our Republic campaign as well. So it's, it's been a hell of a journey, man. So you're telling me there's a chance. 
that dude that's and that's the that's the tenacity that that entrepreneurs have to go through right i mean how many times do we have ideas that uh we think are going to work out and they are good viable products or services and it we just for whatever reason whether it's somebody stomping on us or us getting in our own ways like those things don't come to fruition but you you pivot you modify you adapt and you and you keep moving forward so now that you're ready to launch right now that you're ready to go uh i mean in in the cool thing is you're in a tech space so covid probably didn't hurt you as much as you uh, as as you as it hurt some of these other people but now you're ready to launch what's the, what's it look like going forward like where do you plan on going with with the app uh specifically so the way we're looking at launching is uh so, so we had so much success with like schools also working with corporate partners like working with hospitals uh, working with other corporations who have, you know, corporate social responsibility like dollars. And so essentially using the schools, the hospitals, these corporations as like a pipeline uh, to, to, you know, dis distribute healthy hip hop, uh, get their kids familiar with it, get the professionals, get the teachers uh, familiar with it. And it kind of translate from there going into the homes where parents can download the app. And so basically that is the way we kind of high level uh, distribute the platform. Uh, but also bringing on some like strategic social influencers. So one of our uh, biggest investors is a group out of Atlanta called Collab Capital, and they bring on uh, strategic partners. And so uh, we, we got some real big names on the table. I can't quite mention yet, but as far as like in the sports and entertainment space uh, that are really going to be validating and, and vouching for healthy hip hop, because a big part of what we're doing, um, kind, of, kind of what I talked about in our story, why this is so important is because hip hop culture in 2018 Hip hop music should pass every other genre for the most, you know, consumed genre in the world. We talked about this before the show started, like rock and roll, you know, uh, and even though rock and roll is a huge genre and country is actually the, the was the was the biggest. But hip hop surpassed that. So it's the most consumed, uh, the most, you know, loved culture. But again, a lot of the times it's, it's not always appropriate for kids. And so, like you said, I still love Eminem. I still, you know, uh, love other artists who are in hip hop. And so Eminem, that's, that's a little different. He's one of the best to ever do it. Um, but we don't, we, we're not necessarily anti hip hop. We're not going to, you know, there's always going to be that there. We just want to be a positive alternative for children and families, like as their foundation is being developed early. But even if you're 10 or 12 year old kids, listen to it. Like the music is so culturally relevant because that's kind of the, was one of our, um, value propositions is when you think about kids music or kids hip hop, it's like watered down. It's like corny kids. know they're like, man, I'm not listening to that. This is crap. Mm -hmm. Like our music still embodies the you know, the, the sound, the energy, the wave of current hip hop culture, but just keeps it all positive. So again, using the corporations as a pipeline, working with strategic influencers, really putting together a strong PR media campaign to do things like this. This, this is why I'm so excited and, and grateful to be on the business bros, because getting exposure like this and being able to tell my story, because this is the type of, you know, exposure momentum as we continue to grow, that's going to get people more aware of what we're doing and getting people bought in to the healthy hip hop movement. How do you try to make the world a better place? One song at a time. How are you coming up with the content? Like, are you writing your own stuff? Are you hiring out? Are you, is it open? Like, is it an open platform where other people can contribute? How are you getting the content that you're developing for the programs that you're offering? Absolutely. So we uh, have a team of writers and producers. My co-founder is a gentleman named uh, Wes Smith, and he's actually the creator of PJ Panda. So PJ Panda is like, the uh, Mickey Mouse, well, Mickey Mouse is for Disney. That's what PJ Panda is for healthy hip hop. And so, uh, man, but I found him like, man, the music they're making is just so incredible. So we have a team of writers and producers, but to what you're saying, what we're also doing is we are uh, having other, uh, you know, basically uh, people that contribute to the platform. Cause what we're seeing is there's a lot of educators. Cause you've probably seen like on Good Morning America, how many times you seen like people go viral for like a teacher creates a rap, uh, repurposes mm -hmm. a rap song with like, positive lyrics or whatever. So we're working with a lot of those, uh, you know, contributors because there's been some challenges, like even on YouTube. So YouTube is like, they keep changing their algorithms. It's making it harder for uh, people to, you know, monetize their content. And especially if you're creating content for kids, because now you probably don't notice because obviously a lot of the stuff you're doing is obviously all geared towards adults. But if you're creating content, you have to mark if it's if it's uh for kids because they had such a big lawsuit like you can't even monetize stuff that goes for kids so we're trying to basically create a space where you can come to healthy hip hop to get obviously our core characters our core content but you're also going to get other educational contributors other uh 
kid rappers who are doing positive stuff, you, you're you going to have that hub for it here because really they don't have a home and healthy hip hop is going to serve as that home and as that hub. You mentioned that you're, and you can't say names or anything, but, <clears throat> but you mentioned other influencers that are influencers that are coming in. Are you also actively reaching out to bigger hip hop stars that are already big name people to kind of contribute and go back a little bit, you know, give back to, to the younger generations? A hundred percent. So what we're doing now, because a lot of these artists, they got kids now. And so they understand it, you know, so I think, you know, so to answer your question, absolutely. Yes. And now we're, presenting it in a way that is again that's culturally relevant because usually like they don't like my mom you know kids rap is like corny but like our music is not corny it, it, it still matches the energy and the wave so yes 100 percent we got some big artists already kind of down the pipe uh, lined up for us uh to come out again and be like healthy hip-hop brand ambassadors uh to really say hey listen i know you love my music but your kids should be listening to healthy hip-hop i mean so for example i mean we got some of the biggest names in hip hop and just biggest names like in, in sports entertainment that are coming on board for healthy hip hop to really push this thing forward. Oh man, there's some kids growing up that were some amazing artists. I remember Criss Cross. Yeah, remember yeah, like, wow, wow, growing up. I mean, there was yeah. some there was some talent growing up as kids. Up. All right, all right. So um, when you when you're putting this the whole thing together, where you are today, when you reflect back to that person who just dropped out of college, who didn't decide to go uh, on any scholarship, who wanted to be a rapper, what would you go back and talk about? You know, to to that person right there. Well, what I would say is, you know, just keep an open mind, and, and that again, you can, you I could have still rapped and still went to school. I mean, there's nothing that could stop me from that. Uh, I think for me, like, again, you know, I just I was really looking to my dad and like he was I knew my dad and we had some interaction. He was actually the reason I fell in love with music, but we just didn't really have a connection. He wasn't super bad. And, and I kind of found that in the streets. And so, um, you know, I, I fell in love with music. And then, like, I started working with um, Midwest Side Records. And, uh, you know, that, that was Tech Nine. Tech Nine was a, is a big name from Kansas City. Like he, he was on that label. And so. I had like I had my own independent label come out of, right out of high school. I dropped my first album in '99. I graduated high school in '99. So I'm aging myself, but uh, I'm a 2000. So, yeah, don't worry. Yeah, come on. <laughs> so I dropped my first tape. Then really got in the streets. Kind of was hanging around some of the wrong crowds. And uh, yeah, I would tell myself, man, just you know, keep an open mind, be patient, and just you know, just go for you, go for your dreams. And I would I, actually I was going for my dreams, but I just was. My, I was just a little bit, I was on the wrong side of the track, you know, for lack of a better word. I was, I, I was in some circles and some, and, and in some rooms I had no business being in. Let me just say that. So I would say, Hey man, be patient, you know, still do your rap thing, but go to school. Hey, listen to your mom. My mom was trying to tell me like my grandma was there trying to tell me, but I was just, I wasn't hearing it back then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, maybe we're not able to hear it then, but we are able to hear it now. And you, there, there are people that we end up looking up to mentors, uh, podcast, books, these, all these types of people. One, for example, who kept uh, who kept uh, commenting on our show is Matt, right? Matt uh, DeCourcy. I'm telling you, he's been one. I met him on the podcast. And ever since, I mean, I've been reaching out to him over and over again and always a wealth of knowledge. Uh, what, what or who do you reach out to to kind of guide you in a direction because this whole entrepreneurial space, especially when you start to scale, like there's no real – you know, written book. Everybody has their own journey. Everybody has their own method. Everybody has done different things that were successful for them. Who do you reach out to, or who do you? Who's your mentor that that kind of guides you in the direction? Well, I'll, I'll want to second what you said. So Matt was actually critical um, as far as our growth, and he was one of our early investors as well to get our get our tech really off the ground. And you know, when I came into him, I was like, man, you know, I need help with like my business plan, like my financials, etc. And uh. He was like, OK, you know, initially he was like, man, he just liked what I was doing. It, it wasn't really thinking about an investment. He's like, OK, well, let's sit down and talk. Let me go. through. Let's talk about your business, your model, your, your numbers, et cetera. And he ended up writing up, you know, pro, a performer pro for me, my business plan. And he was like, man, you actually got something here. Like, you know, that, that's when we kind of joined forces. So Matt was critical. I also have a team of advisors uh, that I kind of lean on right now. Uh, my top three advisors uh, are going to be uh, Christy Brown. Uh, she's out of Atlanta. Uh, Andrew McConnell and then Davion Ross in Kansas City. Uh, so kind of lean on my advisors, people who, you know, like I, like the mats of the world who have been there and done that when it comes to 
building and, and scaling a, a tech company. Uh, Cause again, I had the tech vision, but I'm a non-technical founder. So I wanted to surround myself with people who were brighter than me, who, who had been where I'm trying to go, uh, who had a higher net worth than me, you know, so I can kind of attract that energy and learn and apply. So I've always kept just a humble mind and heart to where I'm, I'm open to listen and then apply. And as far as like uh, books, uh, uh, The uh, Richest Man in Babylon was, was, a, was a good book for me. I mean, that's kind of, I know everybody mentions that. Uh, I did Rich Dad, Poor Dad also. Uh, there's this one, um, uh, uh, Becoming a Great CEO that I've been reading. And I'm a spiritual man too. So just, you know, uh, the word of God, I've been really, I, I, that's kind of my foundation. Not kind of, that is my foundation of, of all things. So, uh, yeah, man. So leaning on that and then, and then also leaning on other founders, like who are other founders who are in the trenches, who I can share experiences with and they can share with me. So that way, you know, we can learn about, you know, certain, you know, pitfalls, certain ways that you can go about raising capital, certain ways you can go about growing your company, et cetera. And, and just the fellowship, like stuff like this is having that brotherhood and that, you know, that fellowship because you need that on this journey. Because uh, that's what I'm learning. This is really just all about people, man. Just really, you know, building strong relationships, keeping everything above board, and uh, and, and pushing forward. You changed. You uh, you you went through that transformational journey to become who you are today. Uh, what do you what do you think your kids see you as now? Like, uh, what if they could define you as a father? Other than you know, my dad's awesome and amazing. Like, how do you think they see you in in, in the work that you're putting in and in the impact you're trying to make in the world? Um, you know, I'm hoping that they see me as like an inspiration and showing them that listen, you know, it, you can do anything you put your mind to. Like, and, I, and I'm in in trying to infuse them with that love and passion just, just, just to go after your dreams. So really like it surprises me actually when I, when my kids like talk to me, you know, uh, they were basically, you know, telling me how they bragged to their, you know, parents, like, you know, I'm back to their, excuse me, their uh, schoolmates. Like, you know, my dad has his own business and like, you know, I'm, I'm watching him grow. I've seen it and they, they, we actually do healthy hip hop and stuff together. And uh, that legacy that I want to leave is one of, again, a, a spiritual, a strong spiritual foundation, a, a strong like family unit. Cause I didn't come up with a strong family unit. I want my children to experience that and to just to have that love and know they have this, my support. And what I'm trying to do right now is again, financially put my family in a position to where, you know, they're going to be ahead of the curve, like literally healthy. You're probably talking about starting from scratch, like zero, absolutely nothing. Uh, but my grandparents actually were entrepreneurs. Um, but, you know, when God rest their souls, when they pass, you know, that went to my, you know, my mom and dad. I, I didn't I didn't see any of that because, you know, that that went to them. Um, but I got to see some of that. And I always aspire to be that. So for me, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm hoping my kids see me as like, you know, my dad is a, is an example of you can do whatever you want um, as long as you're passionate about it and you just go get it and do things the right way and treat people the right way. Mm, that's some powerful stuff. Well, let's get you that legacy going. Let's get you a little bit more of that exposure. Can you let our audience know? I mean, if they're interested, I got a lot of teachers that uh, that I communicate with, high school mostly, but still, um, you know, if, if they want to get involved or at least check out your program, how can they get a hold of you? How can they get a hold of the, of the program? Yeah, so you can just hit the website. It's just healthy dot hip hop uh, there's no dot com there's healthy dot hip hop uh the information is there uh, also on the app if you go to the app store ios or android just search three words healthy hip hop uh it's gonna pop up uh you can support us that way um and again all my you can uh, through the social medias you can uh, contact me directly I'm, I'm open book you know i respond in my dms like personally um and then the cool thing too like i said i know there's a lot of high school teachers but what we do even on the high school levels, because our music transcends like high school kids love the music, too. And what we do is kind of take a big brother, big sister model where like high school kids like mentor like the younger kids and share music and create content within the app. So that so that'd be the way just uh, through, through the website, healthy dot hip hop. Uh, and I would greatly appreciate download the app engaging with what we're doing. And uh, you can reach out to me personally and would love to connect. All right. You mentioned PJ Panda. Other than that, can you tell me some of the other characters that are there and which one do you connect with the most? So you got PJ Panda, uh, you got Leo the Lion, you got Princess Panda, uh, you've got uh, uh, Hop, Hop, so Hip and Hop. So Hip is the hippo, Hop is the frog, 
And so it's kind of like a whole story. It's like from the jungle to the zoo. So the jungle represents like the hood, the urban core. The zoo represents like the suburbs. It's a whole storyline, like how PJ Panda is originally from the jungle, but he's a really smart kid, gets a scholarship and goes to the zoo. Uh, but I actually, I have, I'm the, I'm like the only uh, human like character that's animated in it. So I uh, kind of feel like, uh, what's the, what was the, the, the little kid in a uh, like jungle book? <laughs> oh, Mowgli. <laughs> exactly. So, so my story, it kind of is like real life. Like I was raised by like the OGs. Those are the gorillas. So I was raised from like the OGs. There you go. So OG is on the far left. So I was raised by OG, but I made it out the jungle to the zoo myself. And I kind of mentor PJ Panda on, on his uh, journey to like, you know, uh, finding that balance where he still wants to be a part of the jungle boys and what they're doing in the hood, but he still wants to connect with, you know, like his new friends and, and create a better life for himself. So uh, I ultimately, we really connect with PJ Panda. PJ, he's like, he's the staple. I mean, you can even go to YouTube, look at our Healthy Hip Hop YouTube. Just look at the music from PJ Panda. It's just like, it's next level. Like, if you hear the music, like, it connects with everybody. So I think PJ Panda is who I'm going to relate with the most. Nice, man. Well, ladies and gents, make sure you guys check it out. Look, if you got kids, this is what it comes down to. You got to find creative ways to keep them interested. And more importantly, especially during this COVID era, dude, it's about making sure that your kids move. Like I know my kids right now. I got I got Liam and I and I, I'm really proud that he set up his Discord channel, that he's, you know, playing on Minecraft and he's learning about mods and doing all this cool stuff. And I'm I'm proud of him for being able to do that. But I still want him to move, right? I still want him to get up and stay healthy. So if you guys got kids out there that are in similar situations, give them some fun stuff to do so that they can move, so that they stay healthy, so that they stay active. And might as well have some music that you don't mind listening to because that baby shark, let me tell you, that stuff gets tiring real quick. So find some stuff that makes it fun, worthwhile, make a move, move with them, and uh, go out and check out healthy.hiphop. Hey, Roy, thank you very much for coming on the program, man. Really enjoyed you and your story. I'm sorry Disney shit on you. I'm sorry Shark Tank shit on you. But damn, you are still going to make this thing happen. When I see Disney next time, they're going to have a check for me. So it's, uh, you know, it's business. It's not personal. And lastly, what I was going to say is uh, on the fundraising side. So we have been raising some private equity, uh, kind of learning that side on the virtual, uh, on the VC side and angel stuff like that. But we just launched our Republic campaign. So Republic is essentially a crowdfunding, but for startups. So basically you can invest as little as a hundred dollars, but you still convert to equity or stock in early stage companies. So our Republic campaign is currently live. So if you want to invest uh, in early stage founders and have a part of this, have a part of the next Disney before it launches, hey, check out the our Republic campaign, uh, Healthy Hip Hop. You guys heard it here. There are capital investments everywhere, and it doesn't take very much to get in it. I mean, dude, some big things coming up. Roy, thank you again, man. Thank you very much for coming on the show, sharing so much valuable information, and and you know, going out there and changing the world, dude. Thanks. Absolutely, my pleasure. All right, ladies and gents, we'll see you tomorrow. You know, tomorrow's my favorite day of the week. It's SHIT. So happy it's Thursday. We'll see you then. Peace. And we're out. Thank you for listening to the Business Bros Podcast. Are you looking to get more clients or to increase your income? Hernan, the Business Bro, can help you generate referrals through the power of podcasting. And James, the Insurance Bro with Pipeline Insurance, can help you effectively add insurance to your existing business. If you are ready to create wealth today and generational wealth for tomorrow, email businessbros at csfirst.com to schedule a free consultation or join the Business Bros Network, www.businessbros.biz.